Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Radio Show on WeAreHotline.net, and you can hear us Monday to Friday from 11 a.m. to noon. And we've got an inspirational woman on the line. She's a minister. She is a mother. She's a wife, and she's the author of Searching for Love in All the Wrong Places. Please welcome Marcia Yolanda Ford on the line. How are you doing today, Marcia? I'm fine, Nikki. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you, and Happy New Year. Oh, thank you, and same to you, and Happy New Year to the viewers as well. Awesome, thank you. I'm excited about 2017. It's going to be an incredible year of abundance for us all, so I I can't wait for this year to to get going. And uh, you you are uh, one of our first interviews for the year, so how exciting is that? Wow, I'm excited. Oh, my God, really? Well, yes. it's a good thing, the first, the first. Wow, powerful. That's powerful. Yes, yes thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> and and you know what? We are um, just dying to know the details of how this all started. You know, when you when you write a book, it's quite an accomplishment. And I have to say, I, you know, I tip my hat off to you because... It takes a lot of dedication, um, sweat, blood, and tears to put together a very personal book uh, the way you've done it, and I congratulate you on that. But Thank you very much. Let's talk a little bit about how you got to that place. Why and, and when did you write the book? Okay, so the inspiration of searching for love in all the wrong places, Nikki, comes from my personal life experience. Where I now is actually a journey because the book has been in the work for over the last 10 years. And, you know, um, for the past two years, actually, God has been nudging me, come on, I need you to get the book out here to my people. And I'm like, God, you're about to expose me. I don't want to tell anybody that about me. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, really? Mm-hmm. So the conviction was based upon my heart, Nikki. I just really had to put my pride aside and be obedient to the voice of God. So searching for love in all the wrong places comes from my personal life experience and the things and the, the, you say, the tunnels that I've gone through actually to get where I am today. It's not easy because it's actually a broad topic because we all search for something. Sometimes we search in our children, Nikki. We search in our spouses. We search in our job. And sometimes we tend to forget that there's only one love out there, and that is the almighty love. And that's where he had to bring me to put searching for love in all the wrong places out for the readers, the listeners to hear that he is the almighty love, the only love, Nikki. And this is why searching for love in Mm -hmm. all the wrong places has come to life. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So you, you, you... Um, went through all these experiences that you've highlighted in your book to get to that place of epiphany where you understand the true love is in, you know, connecting with the Almighty. Yes. And uh, and and some of these lessons then that you share in the book, what what do you want the, the readers to learn? What are some of the lessons? One of the things I want readers to learn that is one of the most important things for every one of us as human beings is to find that place, is to find our connection to the King. Because oftentimes, Nikki, our journey sometimes gets a little bit longer because we do not listen or because we're not connected to the King. Sometimes we find ourselves in the wrong relationship searching for love. We find ourselves studying in areas that's actually not what God has actually ordained for us. We find we go on journeys that was not ordained by God. And what I want us as readers, our listeners, to understand that when we're at the place that we can hear from him, when we can say, Lord, speak and I hear you, when we can say, Lord, yes, I was wrong, and admit that, you know what, it's okay, my failures are not there to break me, but there to make us stronger, then that is actually what I want people to get, that nothing is wrong with failure. It's a matter of understanding that he's always there, He's always keeping us, and it's okay to get up and say, guess what, I've been there, I've done that. I'm In this book, I'm literally naked, Nikki. There's nothing hidden. Mm-hmm. I actually get very down, you know, literally down to dirt with this book just yeah. to say, guess what, I've yeah. been there, I've fallen, and God has mm-hmm. picked me up, and this is what I want readers to get that. It's okay to fall, but it's not okay to stay down because he's always there to pick you up, to love you, and to cuddle you, and that's what I want my readers to get out there. Yeah, and and I think that's um, very powerful uh, what you're doing, and it's it's also very brave 
uh, to make put yourself in a vulnerable position. But very often there is strength and vulnerability because if you can say, okay, this is me, this is the authentic me, no one come come at you and say, well, you know, I know this about you. This is your secret self that I could expose. You've already put it all out there. So it, it, it makes you a, a tower of strength uh, at the end of the day. And and there's yeah. also um, a, a cathartic experience all of this um, emotion that you've, you know, you've pent up, that you've bottled for so many years because of, of what you believe to be shame, when actually you can take the shame and turn it now into fame. You know, yes, so it's a, it is, it's a beautiful yeah. thing that you're doing. And, and, you. and, and I know that you've experienced, um, you know, this, this, there's a healing, too, that comes yes. when you, with this writing, isn't there? Yes, that's true. A lot of healing happened through this book. A lot of healings, a lot of hurt that I believe that I got over, Nikki. They were there budding up inside, and I was right, and I was crying. I'm like, God, really? I thought I got over this. And we all go through that place. We all do. Mm-hmm. And and get into okay. this place and say, guess what? You know, I've been there. I've been hurting. You know, when you're shut down as a child because, you know, it's it's not okay to talk back to your parents. It's not okay mm-hmm. to express yourself. All those emotional hurt. They build up inside of you, and you start putting them in all the wrong places, just trying to find yourself. So, yes, it it was a journey, has been a journey, and this is what I want my viewers to get because I believe it's going to change lives. You know, one of the next things that um, I actually want to mention that we tend to forget that um, teenage pregnancy, Nikki, is real. And we're losing a lot of our teenagers today to pregnancy, and when we lose them, oftentimes they believe their life is over. They believe that's mm-hmm. the end of it because we've disappointed our family. You know, this is not what I wanted. But I wanted to let, you know, our viewers know that it's okay. I'm not saying it's mm-hmm. okay to get pregnant, but it's okay if you're at that place. Don't give up because there's mm-hmm. more in you. There's more, you know, in that seed that, you know, maybe think that that's a seed that's not actually wanted. And God is actually doing something in our lives. You know, there's so much things yeah. going on us, on us with our inside. Some of us have been married for years and we struggle with internal battles, Nikki. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The things that we can't tell anybody. Some of us, we don't even tell our spouses. It's yeah. okay because this book has actually laid it all out, that I've been there. I've wear a mask for many years. I was a wedding cake decorator. I worked in the healthcare field, Nikki. I've done um, music. I've done playwrights and for everything that I do sometimes, I was hiding myself behind all of these things right. because I just right. couldn't find me. And God had to say, guess what, stop. Right. You know what I mean? He had to do a one-on-one with me. And this is where this book is coming from. And this is what we want to reach out to others to say, guess what, it's okay. Because I've been there and God has actually healed, you know, those emotional scars that seems impossible mm-hmm. to heal. Because sometimes we mm-hmm. speak of forgiveness, Nikki, but we don't forgive. Am I right? Yeah, no, because we don't. Yeah. We have a hard time forgiving ourselves. That's right? true. And loving ourselves. And loving ourselves, as you say that. Forgiving and loving ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. But this book is there to actually clear up some of those errors and, you know, heal some hoon and, you know, you know, put us on a path for a better and help you to move on. Yes, help you yeah, to move absolutely. on. Yeah. So, so Marcy, your story is is really compelling. Um, you, your parents sent you uh, to to Canada. Canada. Yes. Uh, from Jamaica, as a teenager. Yeah. And you were sent here to you know further yourself, to um, empower yourself through education, and yes. then you ended up getting pregnant. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly so, the story. <laughs> so, how, so how old were you when that happened? Okay. So what I was interested so I was 17 years old when I migrated to Canada, Nikki. And I didn't even know I was pregnant. So I didn't go get pregnant. I didn't even know I was pregnant. <laughs> so I was 17 when I migrated to Canada. And about three weeks into my um, my new life, excited I'm in Canada, um, my mom wanted to register me for bachelor's out. And I started getting sick, Nikki. Wanted to find out I was oh, pregnant. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, they were going to kill me. 
they mm-hmm. were so disappointed um, just in every area because I've actually come to Canada now to make a better life and I threw my life away. You know, at 17, Nikki, I had to make a life-altering decision because mm-hmm. it was either go home or get rid of the pregnancy. And right. I had to be tough at 17 to be like, you know what, I ain't quitting. Uh, you can send me home, but I'm not going to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. So it was actually a journey. It was a really, really tough journey, Nikki. And I can honestly tell you that had it not been for God, I wouldn't have been here talking to you today because I don't know how I made it back to this place because mm-hmm. mentally it played with me, emotionally it wrecked me. Mm-hmm. But I can truly tell you through this all that God has truly kept me. And um, God is good. The pregnancy turned out to be a beautiful blessing, beautiful twin. <laughs> You know, and I met that. and I met one of your twins the other day, <laughs> yes. uh, who's uh, an incredible photographer. So, you know, yes. what, what a blessing that was! What a blessing yes. that was! A blessing, and, and that's at the really time, like, mm-hmm. at the time, it didn't feel like a blessing, and that's what no. I want people to understand. That sometimes when God is processing you, He's preparing you for something, it may not feel like it's a blessing. Because when I was in that room, Nikki, and the lady was getting all excited to give me this news, looking for my husband that wasn't even here yet, he said, it's two, not one. I said, God, mm. you didn't, I'm like, God, God, not one, but two? Two. So there was no way, Nikki, at that point in time, it felt like a blessing. But I can tell you that they have been a blessing in my life. My, my twin, one of them is my cameraman. One is my mm-hmm. editor for my, my comedy show when I write. You know, one is my editor, one is my co-writer. It's a family. And, and I can truly say it was a blessing to have them. And it is a blessing. So, as again, sometimes a blessing does not seem like a blessing at the moment, but God has a plan in everything that happened in our lives. He has a plan. He, his hand is yes. in everything. Yes. Fantastic. So I, I definitely hear um, how your life is been incredibly transformed and I know that you you are transforming the lives of others uh, just you know by what you do in the community and when people pick up the book and read uh, just this amazing story how they're going to be healed and they're going to be able to be propelled to the next level because of um, just just how uh, you know just just how real it is how candid it is um, yeah. And and you allow people to just be comfortable in the fact that it's okay to be human and to make mistakes. Yeah. yeah. So, Marcia, how can people contact you? You can contact me. You can go to my website at um, www.marciay4.com. Please send me an email at info at marciay4.com, or you can find me on all social media: Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And that's Marcia Y Ford. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. And do you have any book launches coming up? Yes. The book launch, the famous book launch is coming up for this book, actually, Searching for Love in All the Wrong Places. And this will be taking place at 800 Arrow Road in Toronto, Unit 4 and 5 at House of Praise Tabernacle. And that will be taking place February the 18th, 2017 at 5 p.m. Amazing. So we look forward to coming out and support you there. Um, yes, Marcia, you. you you've got uh, wonderful things that uh, you are offering to us, and and you people listening right now, they really you need to take advantage of this opportunity to meet Marcia in person, to get a signed copy of the book, and when you read the book, your life will be transformed. So I just want to thank you again, Marcia, for everything that you're doing. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your kindness. And uh, we will get it. we're going to keep following you throughout, the, you know, 2017, and come back on the show anytime you like to give us some updates on uh, the wonderful developments that you have uh, planned. So thank you, um, thank you, Marcia. We wish thank you all the best. Appreciate and, it. Uh, we will see you soon at your book yes. launch. Uh, okay, thank you, definitely. Marcia. You're welcome. You're listening to Marcia Y. Ford on the Nikki Clark Show. Uh, if you missed the beginning of the interview, do not worry. We're going to be playing the interview throughout the week, um, 11 a.m. to noon on wearehotline.net. I just want to wish all the listeners a very happy new year, and uh, we're going to stay blessed. 
throughout this month. So yeah. thank you, and we'll we'll keep in touch. Thanks a lot, Marcia. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, Nikki. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.